Alright, hello everybody, and welcome to another video for Valkyrian Sky's Clockwork. Instead of a ship tour like I did last time over there on the Ganymede, this time I'm going to do a small tutorial video on how the hot air balloons work, because there have been a few questions in the Valkyrian Sky's Discord about people asking how they work, and uh, me and a few other people answering them, and it's, a lot of times it's the same questions that I had myself when starting out. And there are some videos that cover it, however, not a lot of videos are out there on the hot air balloons themselves. So, it's, for me, it's been just an experience of trial and error, really. I've spent a few days now experimenting with the hot air balloons, and I've got them down pretty good. Uh, and there were, I used to have previous designs for airships where I had to experiment with the hot air balloons just to figure out how they worked. And once you get them down, they're not too hard to work with it's just it took a lot of trial and error so hopefully this video will skip the trial and error process for anybody else now the main part of a hot air balloon is the ballooner this is what actually produces the hot air and then the balloon casing or you can use wool uh, over here I don't actually even though this is outside of this is wool uh, that's not actually what the balloon is made out of the balloons are made out of uh, balloon casings I'm not entirely sure if there's a difference in efficiency, however, I would assume that there is one, that the balloon casings would be better, but I'm not sure, so if anybody has done an experiment with that, let me know down below and I'll pin a comment if anybody has a definitive answer on that. Um, so over here, we can see on this small ship, there is a hollow structure made out of balloon casings. This structure needs to be hollow for the hot air uh, system to work. So uh, technically uh, on the mod side, the balloon is filling up with hot air. And the more air pockets that are in here, the more hot air that can fit in. You know, Hot air balloon things. I don't know the physics behind a hot air balloon. Uh, so it needs to be completely sealed, except for this block right here. This, However, this does count as a ceiling block. So, no air will escape out the sides. This counts as a fully sealed balloon. So, as long if, if there are holes in this balloon, uh, hot air leaks out, and it'll just fall. Because there will be nothing to keep it up. So, the ballooner needs uh, two different inputs. It needs a rotational input, and it needs a fuel input. So the rotational input goes in through the bottom and the bottom only. Uh, this right here is a redstone resistor. It is the create, oh, I keep saying create, it's Valkyrian Sky's clockwork, uh, block for taking in rotational force. And the output is set to uh, a strength relative to the redstone strength you give it. So if I were to break this real quick, see here that because I have given this uh, a full redstone strength, there is no output, even though there is, in fact, rotational input. So if I were to crank it down a bit, you can see that it's going slow. If I crank it down a bit more, it's going faster. And if I crank it all the way down, that is the full rotational input. Um, so if you really think about it, the, the rotational output of this block is the direct inverse of whatever redstone signal you give it. So the less redstone signal you give it, the faster it goes. The more redstone signal you give it, the slower it goes until eventually it just completely stops. Uh, so that's how you can control the speed for things like your propellers and your ballooners. Uh, the rotational input on the ballooner just corresponds to how fast the ballooner is working. It does not really correspond to how high it can go. I mean, Technically, you know, if it takes longer to go up, then it'll sit at a Y level. And however, there's nothing preventing it from going higher, as far as I've learned, unless it's a weight thing. But it, this, just because it goes slower doesn't mean it limits how high it can go. It just limits how fast it'll rise. So another thing, the other input it needs is frosting, which is... Uh, you have vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. 
So frosting is the combust combustible fuels in Create. I keep saying Create in Valkyrian skies. Frosting is the combustible fuel. Uh, strawberry frosting or pink frosting is the best fuel. It's more efficient. It provides more power, I guess. It's just what I've always been told. I haven't done any experimentation with all the other ones comparing the times or the power that it gives anything. I just know that pink is the best, so you should you'd be using pink. Um, you need, obviously, per create fluid system, uh, you need a pump pumping it in. Any side of the ballooner can receive frosting. So if I were to put it on this side, or this side, or this side, it would work just as well. Uh, so that is that. Now, we have this ship. But yet, it isn't a ship. It's just, you know, it's just in the regular world. How do we, how do we make this into an actual ship? So you do that with something called blooper glue. And a physics confuser. Now let me just get a block to build with here. Blooper glue is just like super glue in Create. So if you've used any of Create's bearings or pulley systems, you know you got to super glue objects together. Um, this uses blooper glue instead to create physics objects that are relative to Valkyrian skies rather than creates physics objects, which are a bit different with how they're handled internally as far as I'm aware. So that's why you need a separate type of glue. Um, so if we want to glue this together, I can't just do this. So you gotta make sure, it's just like World Edit, you need to make sure that the, the boundaries that you set encompass the whole thing. However, uh, we're gonna notice something here. If I do it just like this... So if I do it just like this, and I just try and glue it now... You'll notice I can't. Oh, that's because the selected air is too big. That's not what I wanted. Alright, sorry about that. I got it down to a better size now. Um, if I try it now, so if I shrink this block, it will make a giant cube encompassing it all. You can see that the selected blocks must be connected. So these two blocks that I'm trying to use as relative glue points aren't connected to the ship. So, you know, they need to be connected. So if I, all you need to do is something like this. So if I just connect all this up, and now I glue it, you can see it'll work. Click again, confirm. So just click again, and everything's glued together. But I don't want these blocks, so you can just delete them. Uh, it won't hurt anything if you just delete them after it's glued together. And if I pull up my blooper glue again, you can see everything's still connected. It's all still in this box. Now, let's say uh, earlier on, as I was testing this, you saw uh, I was saying selected area is too big. So if I try and do like maybe like this, you can see it says selected area too big. It doesn't work. Um, that is just like create system how. You know, you can only glue something that's so large. So there's a few ways you can fix this. Either you can, you know, glue it in sections and then attach those sections of glue, just like putting together a puzzle almost. So if this was too big, I could say, well, I'll glue this together right here, and then I'll glue it this together right here, and then I'll attach them with a connecting joint, and then attach it to the connecting joint. You know, it's you can do that. That's what you need to do in survival. Oh, shoot. To do that. So you need to do in survival. Uh, anyways. Whoopsie. Did I just delete that entire thing? Oh my god. I did. Oh, shoot. Alright, I fixed it now, it's all glued back together. I don't know what I did, I must have left clicked and accidentally punched it and destroyed it. Um, anyway, like I was saying, you can, you know, glue it together bit by bit. Or, uh, for what I used over here with the Ganymede, Valkyrian Skies has a command for people with permission to use it. It's called slash VS Clockwork. 
blooper, and then you use six different um, coordinates. Or I guess I say six different coordinates. Two different coordinates, six different numbers. So you have uh, X, Y, Z, number one, right here. I just X, Y, Z, number one, and then X, Y, Z, number two. And then you would do those in the two corners instead of, you know, blooper gluing the two corners with uh, this item, you know, this corner right here, this corner right here. You would use a command to do it. So you'd get the coordinates of this block and you'd get the coordinates of this block and then it would create a giant square all around it. And then you wouldn't need to bother with making sure the blocks are all connected. It would just generate a giant cube and it would connect anything that in that giant cube that's connected all together. Um, so that's how I do it with my big ships over, like I have over here, because if we're going to be honest, you know, gluing it together bit by bit would be really big pain. So that's a nice little trick that I found. Um, now that we have it glued together, it's still not a ship, you know, like what the heck? If I were to turn on these, I could tur I turn on my engines, right? Then I give them power. They're moving, but I'm not moving. See? Oh, what's that? What's that all about? Uh, it's still not a ship. It's still not a physics object, I should say. To make it a physics object, you need a physics infuser. Now, you need to make sure that your physics infuser is glued to your ship as well. Since I already have the glue down in a big cube, and I place it in that big cube on a block that's already glued, it automatically glues. If I didn't have this big cube here, I would need to make sure that it's glued down with it. Otherwise, you'll just physics infuse the physics cube and nothing else. So now once you have the physics infuser down, all you need to do is right click it. And it'll start doing an animation. Now if you want to skip this animation, just right click it again, and it'll speed up the process. Oh my, I seem to have made a mistake. We can fix that. I can tell you why that mistake has happened. So, only blocks that are connected glue. We saw that issue earlier. So when I had my balloon built like this, technically now they're connected because I just built them onto the physics object. However, back then, before they were a physics object, technically these blocks aren't connected. Their diagonal connections don't exist in the Valkyrian Skies and Blooper Glue world. This is connected because as you can see here, there's a block connecting the base to this uh, one by two. However, there's nothing connecting them here. So that's why this happened. If that happens in your build, it's why. It's because diagonal connections aren't proper, like t properly detected in the Valkyrian Skies blooper blue world. All you need, to, if that ever happens, all you need to do is rebuild it. Because it's a physics object now, it's easy to build onto it. Um, I don't need to worry about whether or not it's connected. Anything I build onto it will come with it. Uh, this is just because I accidentally turned the propellers off. I just rebuild it now. Ooh, that's not. There we go. There we go. All right. Now that that's all fixed, so these are the propellers. And I'm sure what happened here. really odd. Alright, that was odd, however it's all fixed now. Uh, sometimes you need to be careful when converting a uh, non-physics object into a Vicarian Skies physics object with moving create parts on it. It likes to bug out a lot. What was happening was, for some reason, it saw this vertical gearbox here as a rotational generating force, like this motor, so it almost like it duplicated the motor, but it was still a vertical gearbox. It was weird. Uh, and because of that, it, these were spinning in opposite directions and create stuff, you know? Uh, so now this is all, all put together. So now, uh, all we have to do is if we turn this all the way down to zero, and now wait a bit, this will slowly start rising. Alright, here we go. You can see it's rising now. Uh, I didn't do a time lapse because I had to fix some stuff. Uh, oh, wow, it's outrising me. Oh, no. Huh. There we go, it's gonna balance off up here. As you can see, um, there is a bit of weight issues. And 
bobbing issues. So, uh, these are common issues with a uh, hot air balloon. So if I just go and turn on hitboxes uh, and get on it without it leaving me, that would be really swell. Any day now, come on, don't, don't, don't run away. You can see that um, there's an orange box here. This is the center of mass. So as you can see, the center of mass has shifted a bit. Uh, that's because the engines are back here. Uh, these weigh more than everything up here. So it weighs it down slightly. Now we can fix this with heavier blocks. So something like iron block is heavier. So if I just put down an iron block, you can already see it's already weighing out. If I put down some more. Oh my, we have a lot of bobbing. That's that's not fun, right? So let's fix this bobbing. Um, this can be fixed easily with uh, wing blocks going out on the sides. So if I just do this, a little bit of this. This on both sides. You can already see the bobbing, uh, the bouncing up and down has fixed when it was going up and down like that. Uh, it's just, you know, bobbing back and forth a bit because I drastically changed the weight. It's still trying to balance itself out. It still seems like the back is a bit heavier, so let's add some more iron blocks. Of course, it's going to make it bounce even more because I'm changing the weight as it's moving, so it doesn't like that. Let's add some more wings to try and fix this. As you can see, this is a very uh, a process which takes a lot of testing uh, to get fixed for your own personal. Come on. What is happening here? Okay, it doesn't want to place it. That's cool. Whatever. Uh, for your own personal ships, because all ships weigh differently, all ships have a different center of mass. It's just it's just a process. It, it takes a bit. However, it is totally doable for anybody. Alright. This bobbing aside, we can see it's uh, starting to hold at a nice Y level. That means I think it's kind of reached its peak Y level. Oh, it's going up a bit more, actually. I'm not entirely sure what the peak Y level is. However, now we're just sitting here. We're just... Oh, all it does is float here. So how do I get it to move? That's where these propeller bearings come in. Now, these are the same things that you use on the planes. However, instead of using propeller to pull a plane forwards, we're going to use it to push this airship forwards. So I just give it a little bit of, or to, excuse me, turn down the redstone input a bit. Uh, we can see that these are the redstone resistors that I'm using right here. The same block see that it's now moving forwards. Or it's moving backwards. It's moving backwards. Um, I know why. These are moving the wrong direction. So if I were to just go, basically what's happening is if uh, it, it's it's pulling the, uh, the ship backwards just with the, the way, the direction that it's rotating. So if I were to go reverse the direction that it's rotating real quick, they would switch the direction they're turning and they would start pushing forwards. Just give it a few seconds, because I don't have it on a very fast speed. I don't want to throw the ship about. Change the speed by, like, two. There we are. Now it's starting to move forwards. So you'll notice that it's moving forwards, um, in... A single direction because I have supplied the same rotational input to both sides so both propellers are moving at the same speeds what if I wanted to turn you know actually it is turning slightly on its own isn't it that's just a bit of how it works um what if I wanted to turn well you know just like any other airship uh, just if you think about it real quick you need to apply uh, more force to one side so if I want to turn left, I don't need to apply more force to the left side because that would give, uh, it make you turn right because of this, if there's more force here, it's just going to start turning right because the uh, right side can't catch up. I would actually need to give more force to the left side. No, sorry, I need to give more force to the right side. Get my sides mixed up. So to turn left, I need to give more force to the right side. So if I give more force to the right side, as you can see, it's starting to turn right. Because it isn't like can this can be compared to. 
It isn't like a car where to go left, you just turn your st wheels to point left. You need to provide rotational force on the sides for the direction you want to go. So, because the side can't keep up and the side is providing more f uh, force, it'll start spinning in the side that can't keep up, basically. It's the best way to put it. It's not technically what happens, but it's the best way to put it. So, as you can see here, now I'm spinning in circles. Uh, what if I want to stop spinning? Oh no, that's, that's going to make me spin anymore. I want to stop spinning. So, now we have what's called inertia. Um, I should have learned about this in middle school science. Uh, that an object has inertia, meaning it'll keep going. Uh, what is it? An object's motion stays the same unless acted upon by another force. I don't know, it's been a while since I've been in middle school. So, it needs more force applied to it. Oh, what's happening here? Oh, it automatically balances out. See? Because more force is being applied over here than over here, it balances itself out. And it stops spinning to the left. Now let's turn this off. And this is a prime example of inertia. So it's not like it's going to stop moving. It's going to slowly drift. Just like a, a boat in the water, per se. Now, I, if you noticed earlier, I had to right-click these. So these have two states. They have an on, like a, an assembled state and a disassembled state. These are disassembled right now, so if I were to turn them on, they wouldn't do anything because they're not assembled propellers. What I need to do is I build them and then right click them. And then they assemble, or yeah, assemble. And then right click again to disassemble them and they'll slowly slow down until so eventually they, there you go, disassemble. Now if I wanted to, I could add on more propellers and then assemble it again. And the propellers will clip through because uh, there's no interaction here. Uh, however, it'll still work just fine. So now I'll disassemble it again. And then maybe I want a shortcut. And then it'll work again. So always remember if uh, your bearings, if your propeller bearings aren't doing anything, even though you're providing them rotational input, Make sure you right click then assemble them. Now that is actually pretty much the basics uh, for a hot air balloon. You just need rotational input into the ballooner, you need uh, combustible fuel going in, you need uh, a balloon sack that is, make sure it is empty on the inside. Oh, okay, so this is gonna, you're gonna, there you go. See, what happened was I opened up the balloon and I popped it and all the hot air escaped and now it's falling quite fast. Now, what if it landed upside down? And I'm like, wow, my ship is upside down. What am I going to do? There's a nice thing called the Gravitron, which I can right click and move my ship around. So I just place it down. See, now it, there you go. And my ship, because it's fairly symmetrical, it'll balance itself out. Now, a good thing to remember there's a few tips for balloons. Um, one, is if the inside volume, so the amount of air blocks inside of your chamber is greater than, I believe it is 4,096. So if there are more than 4,096 air blocks in here, the ballooner will not detect the balloon. This is a limit to prevent your computer from catching on fire from trying to detect such a large object. For example, what if I just, what if I just put a ballooner down here? It would detect forever because there's no block stopping it. So once it hits 4,096 scan blocks, it goes, all right, I give up. Let's not catch fire here. Um, another tip is, if you say, let's say you have a really big balloon and it fills up really slowly. Well, I can just add ballooners, right? See, that'll be more efficient. Um, the answer is actually no. Uh, this isn't very efficient. What is more efficient is if I had a giant balloon you divide it up into bits. So if I had, let's say for the point of example, this was a big balloon, huge balloon. And I have a ballooner in one of the chambers. Uh, instead of adding a bunch of ballooners, because I don't even think this will work, I think only one ballooner would fill it up still. Uh, however, if, what if I want it to fill up faster, I want to rise faster? Well, I can create smaller balloons. I can just do this. Um, and then put a ballooner in each of these balloons. 
and then it'll fill up faster because there's less space for each ballooner to fill up. So that's always something to remember. And I believe that's kind of all the tips. There actually is a tip channel in the Valkyrian Skies Discord, which I will link in the Discord or in the description below. Uh, there's a tip channel with some useful tips in it. It hasn't been updated in a while. However, I'm sure as the mod develops more, they'll update it more. And of course, you can always ask questions in the Valkyr Valkyrian Skies Discord. However, this video is, uh, was uh, an aim. I was aiming to try and answer those questions all without having to type them out. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't have anything from planes yet. I'm not entirely even sure how planes work. I will probably be experimenting with them more soon, and once I get them down, I'll create a tutorial video for planes. Just, there isn't much tutorial videos out there for the hot air balloons. Nobody likes airships for some reason, but I love airships. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If, sure, if you did, make sure to like and subscribe for more uh, tutorial videos for Valkyrian Skies that will come out in the future, and I'll see you guys in the next one.